this is a simplified version of the model that was presented to the White House as developed by Imperial College out of London. And what it does is it combines rather powerful assumptions about how we think that this virus is transmitted, how long you're infectious for, combines it with data about how it's spreading through our community, how it's spread through the United States, and it's continually updated as we learn new things. They can show us what the future could be. And one of the great strengths of these models is that they can show us how we can change what we're doing right now to give us a different outcome. And specifically to this situation, it can show us if our community practices social distancing and extreme social distancing now, how that will change what the outbreak will look like in our community and more critically for our hospitals. So currently we believe we're closer to the orange curve, which reflects about a 40% reduction in movement in our communities. So we need to be getting closer to the yellow line, which would be 50% distancing, but even at 50% distancing, our hospitals would be overwhelmed. So these graphics indicate to us starting today and every day going forward, we all need to be practicing as extreme social distancing as we can to slow the spread of the virus in our community. I'm very concerned that as the weather gets nicer, as people get tired of social distancing and as they get apathetic, that they will start to change their behaviors, that they'll start to get out of their houses and socially distance less, and that would change all of these curves as well. I worry that it could shift back towards the gray line, which is just 25% distancing. I sure hope we wouldn't end up back at the blue line because our hospitals couldn't handle anything near the blue line. If you look at countries like China, where the virus came through and, and had devastating effects, but by really locking down the communities, limiting movement, they were able to reduce the number of infections dramatically. That's because they made it the situation so that each infectious person wouldn't even infect one other infectious person. So infections started to drop very quickly. Currently, the model assumes that if you're distancing at 50% or you reduced your movements by 50%, that you'd keep it up at that level all the way through the coming months. That would incorporate things like the schools being closed. It would incorporate the orders that people who can should work from home. You should probably be thinking about, okay, I need to be batching and going to the grocery store once a week or once every two weeks if I can. Maybe even picking up something for a neighbor that I could drop off without having any contact. Certainly avoiding congregating in groups. I think most of us have, have done that but not all of us at this point, and that absolutely needs to stop. So I think that we wanna avoid getting into gray areas where you say, okay, I'm gonna go hang out with so-and-so at their house and we'll just sit six feet apart from each other. That's not effective social distancing if you're all touching the same things. But if we are successful in dampening down the transmission, which is absolutely what we need to do right now, there is certainly the chance, and I'd say the good likelihood that it would come back at some point in the future unless and until we have enough people immune in the population or a vaccine. I guess there's two ways to think about what the new normal will be after this virus. There's one, how do we deal with this virus in the long term? And that's dampening transmission until our hospitals can handle it and until we have a vaccine or enough immunity in the population. So that's the normal with this virus. And then there's the question of what's normal for us as citizens of our community um, who are going through a real stressor and a real um, upending of all of the norms about how we go about our days right now. Um, the decisions that people make today and every day going forward will choose for our community which one of these curves we end up on. So it falls on every one of us to be doing more than we're doing now so that we can get a handle on this.